The following video has been approved by the Jetty marketing team. The video has been rated Jetty. The following video may not be suitable for all viewers. G'day mate, welcome back to the 12 games of Christmas with me, Jenny. Today, I want to look at Good Company, which is what, our seventh game? Our seventh game, yes, our seventh game on the lead up to Christmas. Um, now, Good Company, Good Company, it, it, it has a little slogan here, uh, Corporate Machinery Simulator, and I'd maybe give it that game. Um, the, the Steam description is probably better. It says, Good Company is a tycoon management simulation about building, automating, and optimizing a robot manufacturing empire, where you are the CEO playing single player. They are actually adding multiplayer in the upcoming roadmap, which we'll get to shortly. Um, and you tackle the scenario levels, plus they've added a free play recently. And it is, it is really a little logistics game. It's a little logistics game about making components and that starts from like it, it starts where the it industry started you know it starts with the calculator and then works its way up to a game boy and then an ipod and an iphone and robot vacuums and drones and really works its way through you know modern manufacturing okay it's simplified a little bit because it is a tycoon game and everybody likes a bit of a tycoon game um now i will jump straight through to the roadmap because i do want to mention this before i forget so the roadmap, they've been adding things to the roadmap, roadmap and also ticking them off the list. Now, I did actually feature this game quite some time ago on the channel, and there is a Humble Bundle link down in the description if you want to grab the game. And they've they've done a lot of a lot of updates and a lot of quality of life updates. Now, unfortunately, I'm still running on version 0.6 because I did spend the last couple of days cranking up some time making a free play map to sort of take you guys through all the the pros and cons of the game and all that sort of stuff and then the game has steam cloud support which is handy it's nice it's really nice to have your saves transfer instantly from a computer to computer unless you have children who decide to jump onto your game and accidentally delete your save file that you were prepping for this video so i'm running a slightly older version but Still, most of the concepts are, are, are still the same. They have been improved. Um, so logistics was actually one of my complaints I had when I first played the game in early access. It's been totally revamped and thoroughly improved. Uh, but, you know, there's more to come. Um, as I said, we're in version 0.8 currently. Obviously, 0.9 is coming. 0.9, they'll be adding modding infrastructure, which is going to be, I think, a game changer. Really, really is going to be a game changer. Um... We're also afterwards going to be adding a couple more, um, couple more goals and additions into the game. Those are probably be coming before 1.0, I would assume. Um, and then these are, you know, after 1.0 release. Anyway, uh, let's jump back into the actual game itself, and I'm going to jump into the campaign. As I Sam said, I am running in a slightly older version, so. Some of the stuff is dated, but it's still mainly all still there. Okay, I'm going to jump to, I think, the third one. I think it's the third level I want to jump to. Okay, so, uh, we have, well, we have a couple of things. So, we have Simple Production, okay? We're bringing in uh, so, uh, simple parts. So, we're bringing in, like, chemicals, electronic parts, metal, plastic, blah, 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 blah. And then we're converting that into all the parts we need to make the item we're currently selling, which is actually a calculator, okay? Still in the very, very early game here. So we're bringing in the parts, we're turning them into, uh, what are you making? You're making circuit boards. So turning them into basic circuit boards, into uh, more advanced circuits, so a simple circuit itself, into a LED array, you know, all the basics you'd find in a calculator. Um, battery stacks, so on and so forth. Uh, that's logistics workplace. They don't actually exist anymore. And this is what I want to go to. Design desk. So, uh, let's duplicate this so I can actually get in there and edit it, uh, which has been changed, thankfully. Uh, nope, that's not the button I want. I want to edit draft. Edit. That's the button I want to look for. Okay, uh, let's just clear this off. So, we have a couple of things. So, you design, in my case, we're still dealing with a calculator. And first thing you need to do is you need to choose the casing. So, you can have a metal case, which has certain pros and cons. Uh, a plastic case, certain pros and cons. And in my case, I went for a wooden case. And then you get to play this internal Tetris game, um, along with 
changing the appearance. So, you know, I went for that for a calculator. Because why not? With a couple of preset colors. I think the colors have been updated or they're going to get updated shortly to, you know, more customizable colors. Um, but then you need to add modules. Okay. And this is where, this is where the game sort of takes its really becomes, I don't know, I guess more interesting, um, rather than just from a pre-made set of things, you just, you know, say, yeah, I want like five batteries because I want to have the the, the, the the longest lasting calculator in the world and therefore have much market appeal because my calculator has a battery that runs for five days compared to everybody else's one day. Um, you can, you need to work around what your case design can do for you. And obviously, you know, all the different cases have different drawbacks they also have different different items required to manufacture them and different manufacturing times so as i said going back to the modules we get to play this internal game of tetris so we do need to have a 0.6 in processing power to keep up with the market uh that is processing power isn't it yes so if i put a simple circuit in here i need to have at least three of these uh and i need to play the tetris game really well because I need to keep as much space as possible. And as I said, each one time I add one of these, it creates some noise. It creates some heat loss. Um, obviously, I want to try and stay under 0.9 heat loss and 1.2 weight and 0.9 fragility. Yes. Um, okay, so we need a display, which is this one, an LED array, nice and simple one. Uh, right there, it turns out I need two of them. Ooh. Uh, and then we need some data storage. So data storage, small registry bank. Oh, that's actually fairly easy to fit. So there is my item. It's done. It's, it's good. It's dusted. I can add more items to it. So if I'm going up against a particularly hard competition, because there are competitions built into the game, you can add more stuff. Like, you know, having twice the memory or uh, a batch. No, there's no way I can fit that battery. Uh, can I fit that battery? Only if I was really good at Tetris. Uh, can I... Yes. Rotate that. Rotate that. A single cell battery. ba -boom. Uh, so I can push my market appeal up higher than my, my competitors because I happen to have battery storage, whereas they don't. Um, and this is, like I said, this is still very, very early game. This is where we're still playing with calculator. Uh, I, I'm, I was actually doing two different types of calculators. Uh, one, no, that's a pocket computer. That's a calculator. Yes, I'd already upgraded to uh, like a PDA, very, very early PDA. Um, so this was in this particular campaign. As we jump up through, uh, return to map. As we jump up through, uh, one, two, three, let's go to the fifth one. So by the time we're up to the fifth one, we, we, Things have got a little bit more complicated. Can I have my mouse pointer back? There it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shh. We have an advisor that never shuts up. All these tycoon games do. So, um, here we were doing robot vacuums. Good old robot vacuums. Uh, everybody needs a sweep 3PO. So, let's go to brand new uh, oh, cleaner bot or a courier bot. We actually had two different choices of which product we want to uh, design. And uh, each one of these has a different amount of slots. So, this. <laughs> Sorry. Ooh. <coughs> Sorry, I had, I, I had a child bring home a small virus from, from the last couple of days of school before they went on summer break. So we have um, different different cases, and each of the cases have different pros and cons. Uh, on top of that, have a different amount of space. So going back to that Tetris design, you know, this one has space for 30 different slots. How they're arranged is who knows, but, you know, we're going to find out as we get there. So... Uh, courier bot same story okay so we're going to start with this case and if we go back over here we can see that's a window case that's a uh, enhanced case and that's a polished case and again each one of these have different manufacturing times um we can see that the polished case actually starts off with a minus three in noise pollution uh compared to a 0.2 if you're going for window case so you know again pros and cons to each um go back to our modules we do require some mobility some processing power and some storage space uh, a large compartment boom done or i could do no i only actually need oh 
A small compartment is the same size as a large compartment. Obviously, we're going to do a large compartment. Large compartment is probably going to require more manufacturing process to actually make a large component rather than just making a small component. So, you know, again, pros and cons. You can either spend the time on the floor, which we'll cover in a second, making something a little bit a little bit harder, uh, but might fit into your design better. So again, we have a small motor, which has mobility of one, a medium motor with a mobility of two, or a stepper motor, which has a mobi mobility of four. Uh, a stepper motor, oh, a stepper motor was actually way harder to make. Yeah, I remember now. Uh, so let's throw a stepper motor in there. I actually need two of them. Uh, there and there. And then we need some processing power. Uh, so again, simple circuit for processing power of 0.2. So I'd need three of these. That's not too hard. We can throw in three of those without too much problem. A logistic circuit. So we can go back to our Tetris example. We've got the the lovely Z shape that everybody everybody needs one when you can't when when you don't have one. Or we have a programmable circuit, which is your straights. And as I can see, if I throw in one of those with hell, we can throw in a little one. We've actually got plenty of room left over. Uh, product must have a new name. Yeah, I've got to name the damn bot, but you know, we can save that as a draft and just, uh, can I save that as a draft? Uh, temp. Cool. Save that as a draft. Close. And on to our actual production. So let's cover production as, as quickly and easily as I can. As I said, there is a link down in the description where I did a whole playthrough of the first seven levels i think of the campaign um if you really want to find more information about how the game works i really recommend you go have a look at those first uh let's cover some actually let's cover this so this is our research table our research table does unlock where is research research hey so we can spend research to gather more interesting things so we have a double battery pack we can go up to a quadruple battery pack how we get research is we create things and then our little people bring them over here and smash them apart with hammers um ah uh, analysis desk yeah the analysis desk these are the ones that smash them apart with hammers and uh yeah that that's how we do research we we, we take things we've already created and smash them apart with a hammer and that gives us research points which then the research tables can then spend so we have an incoming zone right here uh which is bringing chemicals electric parts glass metal plastic and wood and we're doing all sorts of things with this so we're making uh rods to make uh no Mechanical parts? They're going to mechanical parts? No. Rods went into... Okay. Let's start with screws. Screws are... Rods go into screws via this little shelving rack. Uh, metal goes straight into gears here, which then goes to this shelf along with the screws, which then get picked up by this person, get turned into me uh, mechanical parts uh, over here and over here. Which then, I'm actually making belts because we do have a little bit of automation with some conveyor belts over there, but we'll get to them in a second. Uh, we have our small compartments. I did say we can make small compartments. And then a large compartment, which requires a small compartment and extra manufacturing. So this is what I was saying. That there, there's, there are advantages and disadvantages to making just, just a small, that'll do the job, or turning into a larger one. Uh, over here we have another stepping motor which requires those mechanical parts we made before plus some rods plus some more metal we've actually got two of them running they're putting a lot of this stuff onto this medium shelf and then another person's shoving them on the uh on the conveyors to take them if i work my way through the 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 horrible spaghetti building that i've done the conveyors take them over to this building where we have a whole nother manufacturing ring Wing. So this was doing most of the metal components. This is doing all the electronic components. So we have another incoming zone over here, which is bringing in plastic, metal, glass, electronic components, and more plastic. And over here, we're creating you know, simple circuits from uh, circuit boards and electronic parts, which means somewhere around here, I have... Is that them? No. Is that them? Oh God, do I have a third building? I don't think I do. Aha! Circuits. Circuit boards from metal and plastic, uh, which are being turned into simple circuits with some electronic components. Uh, don't know. I don't want to know about the employees. The employees, the employees so far, and really, there's no pro and con to any one of them. They're all about as good as you can get. Uh, we have what's this? We're making 
that one. Hey, electronic workbench. So we're making integrated circuits from some electronic parts and some plastic. We're making plastic parts right here from plastic, metal parts from... No, we're making a simple case from plastic. We're making a metal case from here because, again, I think I have two different products. Yeah, I have two different products we're actually shipping out. Um, so on and so forth. So this is how your, your, your simple production goes. And then we have an outgoing zone where, in theory, we're making uh, clear cleaning plus the plus version. Uh, actually, no, we're just making two of those and we're shipping them out to hopefully make a profit. So again, let's go back to the main menu real quick. Uh... And let's look at the last mission I placed. I, I played Bed and Bots. Yeah, shush, shush. And I did finish this one. Oh, no, I did. Okay. All right, this is actually a simpler factory. So this is fairly crazy over here. So we're doing a little bit of everything. Uh, actually, let's start over this side. So over here where things are simple, we're making uh, circuit boards by bringing the materials over here and somebody's actually carrying them across and putting them on a shelf right here for us. So we can make some very, very simple circuit boards, which we can then upscale into circuit boards. Circuit boards are going, hang on, where's the logistics button? Circuit boards are going to this shelf. Aha, aha. Circuit board's coming over here to go with uh, into a simple AM radio link because what the hell are we making in this particular one? Uh, where's my research table? There we go. Oh, we're making a courier bot and a flying delivery drone. That's right. Okay, so... Um, oh, that's right. The market features went up, so I had to upgrade the bots. Yes, as the game progresses. The market requires better and better things. And as you can see, I have a market appeal of 1.6, uh, 2.4, uh, 2.4, and 1, no, 2.6. Yeah, these just scraped over line. My design team was not terribly good this time around. Um, so yeah, we're making uh, circuits to turn them into a radio so we can control our little bots that can take over the world. Uh, another radio over here. Over here is doing analysis. So they are... Smashing apart the parts with a hammer. I, for some reason, the animation's been removed. Like I said, I am running an older version. So maybe that's why the animation was removed. But I distinctly remember them smashing things apart with a hammer. Uh, we have a research desk. Uh, and then our little escalator here. Our little conveyor here. Which they can put items on. And those items will automatically roll out of that factory and roll into this factory, where we have a whole bunch of workbenches tidied around as close as possible, making those mechanical parts we were making before to make... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that again. Uh, making mo more motors, because of course these are these are either flying drones or driving drones. Um, so obviously we're going to need a whole pile of motors to keep them up and running. Uh, we have electronics workbench making a safety fuse because that became a thing halfway through the production where suddenly we need to have safety fuses on all our robots so they couldn't take over the world. Um, yeah. We have the small compartments that we covered earlier. We have a double battery base, so bigger and better batteries. Uh, a small battery, which is then required to make a bigger battery with some more chemicals and some more plastic parts. We have the rods, the screws. Um, and all the other components that are actually required to come all the way over here to make these in, uh, to make these motors. So, as you can see, that's sort of where the basics start. Now, the one thing I do want to cover is this logistics one that I looked at before. Now, this has been thoroughly overhauled because it was little. It actually hasn't been thoroughly overhauled. It's been it's been partially overhauled um, because there was definitely some glaring issues. And if you go watch my original playthrough, you'll see the glaring issues that I complain about. You know, at the moment I'm bringing in these resources and I have dedicated people bringing resources to this shelf and to this shelf and to this shelf and to this shelf. And these dedicated people are assigned to this particular post and then they can only access the items within that post. That's all been changed. They're still moving items to different shelves. That's still part of the core game. But now you just assign a person. And it doesn't matter where the... Bring that back up. 
they don't have to get assigned to these posts anymore. So if I need to bring items all the way over here, right, and as we can see, I have another one of these lovely delivery posts right here, which is covering this building. They just walk. They just walk. It doesn't matter whether this one's flat out and it needs all three people here or this one needs one person or two people. It's dynamic, which is a very, very, very welcome change. Um, actually, I've got another one here, which has five people on it. Five people on it. So I, I, I had a lot of mismanagement of my art. Uh, my employees logistic behaviors because the game was sort of limited in how well you could send how well you could move your people around logistically um as you can see i have a whole bunch of people standing here doing nothing because oh look there's another person on logistics and i'm willing to bet wherever the hell cooper enkins is uh he's too slow He's too slow. And I can hire more employees. I can throw another employee at the job. Currently, the employees are, you know, they're, 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 there's no reason to to hire one over another. It's it's really just add, throw another person at, at the work job. Um, they have no pros and cons. It's probably the best way of putting it. But yes, this is, as a good company, I strongly recommend it, mainly because of the updates that happen. As I said, I did spend two days mucking around in free play to build a map that I can sort of just demo the game a whole bunch better than what I am currently. And, um, kids, kids, kids and school holidays. Yeah. But with all that said, this one, I'm going to end this video as it, if you're interested in this game down in the description, you'll find two important links. One is a link to the original playthrough I did, which will sort of go through the game a lot, a lot better than this 20 minute video will. Um, and the second one is a link to humble bundle. If you choose to grab a copy of the game, it is a humble bundle link, which then gives you a steam key. But yeah, it is one of the games I, I thoroughly recommend. I have spent a lot of time both when I originally played it and as the updates come out, I've spent a lot of time going back and checking out the game a second and a third time. Anyway, with all that said, this is where I'm going to leave this video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you're enjoying. And Bossy McBossiton? No. What's my player name? What's my player name? What's my player name? Bosco. JD. JD and Bosco. We'll see you in the very next video. Anyway, thank you guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, bye.